going to say good morning, but it's not morning. It's actually a really pretty rainy day here in Kaysley, Utah. And I'm excited to be with you today. Do a little intro on what you're going to see is a caramel apple tutorial, kind of a gourmet caramel apple that um, I do about every year and I do them with a lot of my family members too. But this year it was for Christmas. So excuse all the Christmas decor behind this. We're moving into Valentine's Day. <laughs> Just decorate accordingly your apples. That is. I hope you enjoy it. It was fun making it. Thanks. All right. I wanted to talk a little bit about these apples. <laughs> Damn apples. Um, okay. I believe myself, I've used a lot of different apples before, but I do believe that the Granny Smith are your go-to apple because with all the sweet things that we're going to put on these, you're going to need a really tart apple. And these are your ticket. And right now, I mean, and the other thing is this, is when I'm doing holiday um, apples, how pretty is it to have a green apple and then you've got your first year caramel and then I always leave a little bit of the green showing as you'll see in a little bit. And then I do the caramel down and then I take the chocolate a little bit lower so you can see all of those layers. And then if I do like red hots or something around it, it just makes a really pretty apple plus a yummy one. And that's what we want. So there's the apples getting ready to stick in the sticks and we'll dip them in our caramel. Okay. I wanted to give you a hint on this. Now, you know, I've washed these apples. All of them been washed, dried. There are a few that have a little bit of water, you know, up at the top, so I just shake those puppies out. But what I do is I lay them all out, stems up, and you know how sometimes they kind of lay on the side? Like this one's kind of on its side right here. Don't ever feel like you have to do this straight on. You might want to pull back so you can see the angle. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, because that will, is going to throw your apple off the whole way. So what you want to do is you want to actually go through it um, perpendicular so that that, even if it's not perfectly right straight through the apple, here's another one. So like that you want to make sure that it's going straight up and down. I've made the mistake of doing this the other way and believe me, it doesn't work very well. So, and these sticks I'm using, um, I've used actually branches before and I've done um uh uh what is it I've done everything from popsicle sticks but actually I like the length of these these are just skewers like that you would do um using for um a shish kebab or something like that but I like this and they're tight enough and strong enough that they're going to hold that apple and believe me there's going to be a lot of toppings on this it's going to get huge and so you really need something substantial to hold that. So that's another hint. Okay, we're gonna get started on our caramel apples. And I will tell you this, this is the hardest part. Look how pretty, I love the way this looks. And I, a lot of times I'll do this for um, Halloween, but I didn't get around to it and I wanted to do a tutorial because I have a lot of people asking for it. Of gourmet caramel apples and I've told you a little bit about it. This is a really awesome recipe because it's easy as far as the recipe goes, but it takes forever to get the caramel at the firm ball stage that you need to have it. But it's worth it in the end. So, all right, I have to quadruple my recipe. I have four pounds of brown sugar in here. I am going to add to that two pounds of not two pounds, this is one pound. So two cups of butter, and I've got four cups of caro syrup. I'm gonna combine those, bring it to a boil, let it boil for a little bit, and then I will add in four cups of uh, a condensed, um, sweetened condensed milk. So this is kind of the tough part because it takes forever, <laughs> but it's worth it. And I'm gonna get them dipped tonight and we'll finish them up tomorrow and then we'll wrap them up so cute because that's part of the excitement of it all is getting a really gorgeous apple. Okay, so let me show you this. Um, this is the three ingredients that I talked about before, the butter, the caramel syrup, and the brown sugar. And it's starting to get to a point where it's starting to boil. now. A couple of things I don't know if I mentioned before was you got to use a really big, heavy um, 
heavy bottom pan, or it will scald or scorch, and you can't stop stirring. So, um, after this is boiled three minutes, this is what my recipe calls for. Um, after this is boiled three minutes, I will pour in the milk, the sweetened condensed milk, and then I have to keep boiling this and um, stirring this until it gets to the firm ball stage. And if you need to know what that is, um, it's best to have a candy thermometer, but another way you can do it is also to have a little bowl of cold water and you can just like let um, some of the caramel go into it and then after a second pull it out and if it's firm in your fingers, then you know you're about there. And make sure you get it to that point because I've had times where I did caramel apples, dipped those caramels out, caramel apples, and they were beautiful, and came back in about 15 minutes and there was a puddle of caramel and a green apple sitting on top of it. So make sure you get it to that point or you're going to be kind of sad. So that's your next step. Stirring away. Okay, we've got our caramel we put in the milk after it started to boil. And I've got my candy thermometer in here. This is the drudgery of it all, but I'm gonna lick my fingers when I'm done. Um, and we're getting close. So I'm gonna show you, this has been boiling for probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Once I put the milk in it, constantly stirring. Because <clears throat> whenever you put milk in a product, it actually um, is, it's, milk or butter will often um, cause something to scorch. So as long as you're stirring <coughs> and your heat is on medium to medium low after it's, cause right now it's boiling, but um, it's on medium to medium low. Okay, so I'm waiting, but I wanna show you how I do this. If you don't know, I'm gonna take a little bit of this caramel, try not to drobble it, and I've got a cold little bit of water over here with ice cubes in it. And I'm gonna keep it stirring, and I'm gonna reach in here, and I'm gonna show you. Oh, wow, we're getting there. This is pretty much a softball stage. See how quickly it cooled it down. Oh, hold on just a minute. I'm gonna lose my candy thermometer. Hello. Um, but this, we're about close. This is, I've probably got another three minutes left. When it's not, um, <laughs> you can do this with one hand. When it's um, not at that stage, it'll just kind of dissolve right in your hands. So we are almost there. I have gummed up my thermometer though, and I can't even see it. That's bad, that's really bad. So, um, and make sure you have a pretty good thermometer. Well, it's kind of on its last leg. Merry Christmas to me, eh? Hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking so. Anyway, we're getting really close. This caramel has been <laughs> really hot. We're talking about 250 degrees, okay? So it looks really runny, but actually it is ready to go. And we're at the firm ball stage. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous, look at that. So I'm gonna show ya. Um, I actually do have a pan ready uh, to catch any leftovers because you don't wanna throw this stuff away. It's so good. Um, and also, the pan is sprayed with a little bit of like uh, non-stick spray and a tiny bit here on the counter. You don't want to put too much on the counter because it actually can uh, change the way that your chocolate adheres to your caramel. All right. yeah. but my fingers are sticky. I better wash this. <laughs> One other Thing that I wanted to bring up that my daughter said that was a really a good point is that when you are cooking this caramel, homemade caramel, you need to make sure that your pan is big because this will boil up almost to the edge and as it comes down it's only half full. So make sure you you don't want this boiling over. What a mess. Hey, here we go. So, apple. Okay, what I usually do though when I'm doing this is I like to leave a little bit of the green showing because it's pretty and you don't need the whole thing done. So I'm going to go to about that point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this because I really want the caramel to stay on there and as it cools, of course, it's going to thicken and harden. So I'm going to give it a minute, just let it kind of drape around it. 
I can already actually see it changing around the top of the apple as it starts to harden just ever so slightly. The other thing is this, is as this one cools, I kind of come up with a technique where I dunk another so that I don't want to set this down before it's ready because it will puddle. And man, do I mean puddle. So I can see that this is cooling and the caramel keeps the rest of the caramel warm. So um, that's kind of nice. The dog is asking to go out. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait. Come over here, Kai. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here. No, it's a good boy. Come, on, come over here. Don't look me up. Come over here. Come on in here. They need to say hello to you, kid boy. Come over here. Come on. I'm gonna clean up, man. <laughs> and you're gonna have to wait, okay, buddy? You gotta wait for just a few minutes and I'm gonna be out. Okay, so we are about there on this one. I set it straight down and let it do its thing. And I start with the next one as this one cools and I turn it. I may even double dub these. Donk. It's so pretty though, isn't that just a pretty thing? And it's so shiny. Can you see that? How pretty and shiny that is? This is just the first stage though. As these um, cool overnight, um, they'll be ready to go. And then we put on the chocolate and all the toppings. That is a blast. I quite love this. 